welcome today we will be discussing about the environmental ergonomics so we will be taking from today onwards few uh, weeks where we will be talking mainly about the different types of uh, techniques and tools which are being used to analyze assess and evaluate the environmental ergonomical factors okay so we will be understanding that what are those factors, what are the parameters or variables that we can measure and how do we measure. So slowly we will be taking towards uh, the evaluation process and assessment process. So we will be discussing the methods and associated tools or instruments that are being used for this type of evaluation. So let us start about, uh, about this particular topic that is the environmental ergonomics. So all of us know that human uh, you know, always respond towards the surrounding environment. So these surrounding environments are varied in nature and definitely it can help in determining the characteristics, the sensitivities of concerned individuals, right? So how sensitive we are, how it is affecting the performance, everything is dependent on the individual to individual. Of course, the climatic condition also helps them to adapt the situation and then uh, slowly they respond towards various factors or various environmental uh, variables. So practical assessment methods which are being used to analyze the environment, individual environmental components, uh, particularly we can do it at the workplace okay so at at any workplace we can use that so human interaction with physical environment taken into consideration to understand the impact of such environmental factors on the work efficiency work quality even the work quantity okay so these are some elements that we are ne we need to understand thoroughly so it is very much connected to various physiological responses uh, which are going to uh, in get impact or based on the changes on the environmental parameter suppose thermal changes if there are some thermal changes how the physiological changes are happening and how that is going to impact your uh, performance or productivity of the whole system that we are going to understand in detail. So these are the major element which are going to be considered. First is thermal comfort, air quality, outdoor environment, illumination which we will be talking about from lighting perspective, sound and noise and vibration. So let us begin with the thermal condition. So if we talk about thermal condition, how do we measure it? Normally we measure the thermal condition by analyzing the heat exchanges and related parameters of heat exchanges are external and personal parameters. So ex under external parameters, we try to understand the temperature, humidity, wind speed, etc. From the personal, we, we can go ahead with the clothing insulation, the personal metabolic rate and all those things. So how much heat is there in the environment and what is getting generated within body and then how the balancing is happening? What is the kind of heat exchange is happening? Is it from outside within the body or from uh, inside of our body it is going outside? How this scenario is based on that we will get the you know physiological responses we will understand how the this can be measured and based on the measurement we will be able to tell that what are the varieties of responses can be obtained and how that is going to affect the individual's performance at the workplace so let us understand what is heat exchange. So of course 
it is like kind of heat is being produced within the body and the kind of heat we are losing from our body. So, if there is an equilibrium, we are in a peaceful situation. If there is a, you know, break in the equilibrium, definitely there will be either heat stress or cold stress. So, we can say this heat exchange can be assessed by measuring the climatic parameters directly affecting the human heat balance. So, what are these climatic parameters that we are going to learn in next slides. So, state of comfort or low thermal strain can be achieved when heat balance is maintained close to the equilibrium of course. If what is the amount of heat is generating and what is the amount of heat we are uh, know, going out from our body if that is near to equal amount or equilibrium is maintained then of course you are in a comfort zone. So, we can express this particular heat exchange in W by meter square as the heat exchange between the skin and the environment. This formula we can express it in this particular way. When we are talking about heat exchange, we need to understand the what is the process of heat exchange. It is typical physics uh, methods that is the convection and the radiation. These are the two way how heat is getting exchanged between the outdoor environment or the environment uh, to the environment and the human body. So, let us understand what is or we, we will understand that what is the convection. So, convection it is the process of heat transfer, cool air flows along the skin surface and carries the heat away from your body. So, if there is some kind of cold air which is going uh, which is present in the environment once it touches our skin it takes the heat away from our body. The second is the radiation through uh, like through radiation we have heat transfer. So, between body and environment without any direct physical contact and separation in space. Okay. So, these are the two major methods or uh, way uh, that heat exchange happens between the human body and the uh, connected physical environment. So, here you can see that I have mentioned what will be the heat stress and when it will be heat balance and when it will be cold stress. Because when we are ta talking about thermal stress, thermal stress can be heat stress and thermal stress can be cold stress. Both cases you are if you are not in a comfort zone then it is stress. So, in thermal equilibrium if we look at from the thermal equilibrium perspective if heat loss is more than your heat production heat loss is more than your heat production uh, this is little wrong this is this will be this heat production is more than your heat loss then definitely you are in a heat stress ok. So, mode of transport will be evaporation and body temperature will keep on increasing ok. So, that cases it will be very difficult. Now, if it is heat balance that means whatever the heat loss is happening the same amount of heat is getting produced ok within your body. So, you are in a comfort zone. So, what is the possible way of heat transfer? Again it is mainly the convection and you are in comfortable situation. Here also cold stress that whatever the heat production is happening it is less than the uh, heat loss. So, if we are losing heat in a more quantity as we are producing within our body. So, our body is getting slowly cold direction right. So, that is where it is uh, cold stress and we can say that convection and evaporation both process happens when we are talking about the cold stress and your whole body temperature slowly specifically core body temperature slowly goes down and we feel cold. So, then it is cold stress. Now, how 
we can do the measurement location. So, when we are talking about heat stress, cold stress or thermal comfort, we need to understand how do we measure them, right? So, we should before we do the measurement, we should have the position where we are going to measure and the time when we are going to measure. So, measurement location need to be present in at the actual workplace. So, you suppose you are talking about heat stress or cold stress, you need to understand what is the kind of workplace they have. Suppose right now I am in this recording room, if I have cold stress or heat stress, I need to understand what is the thermal environment of this particular recording room, right. So, the measurement location need to be within this particular premise. So, switch to the location grids in case of impracticality. So, if you find that it is very difficult to measure, so you just need to put it in a grid format and you check those grid location and you can do the measurement. So, thermal variation in space is quite equivalent to the grid density. Okay. Now, coming to the temporal consideration, so measurements at one point in time are misleading. Suppose I am talking about point measurement. So, I want to measure the thermal environment of this particular recording room when I am doing the recording. Now, I just come and do the measurement once. That is not going to give you a correct fact of the thermal environment of this particular situation. So, what we need to do? Suppose I am recording for a 2 hours period of time. So, maybe we can do at the beginning of the work, then at the middle uh, of the session and maybe at the end of the session or maybe depending on the uh, kind of experiment or objective I have, I can measure within 10 minutes interval or 15 minutes interval like that. Okay. So, only once measurement is not going to give you the actual result. So, you based on the objective, you need to decide what are the temporal division you want for your data collection in terms of environmental thermal measurement. If we talk about climate, so climate monitoring to be done for daily and seasonal pattern. So, here also same, same consideration, suppose I am doing a recording at the summer season, I am doing the recording at winter season as well as in the rainy season. So, thermal uh, environment will not be similar in all these three seasons, right? So, when we are talking about thermal environment, we have to take a consideration of these climate, okay? So, suppose I am talking about uh, thermal environment of India and thermal environment of any other country or a particular location. So, then that case is also space is important time is important morning ha morning shift or evening shift middle shift when so based on that the whole environmental parameter thermal parameter will change so whenever we are talking about thermal environment measurement we need to take the consideration of the location we need to take the consideration of the timing so, equipment must lock for at least a day aided by the questionnaire. So, it is not only the actual measurement will help you to give an understanding of the thermal environment, thermal comfort. It also needs some uh, no added questionnaire which is going to be answered by the occupant of that particular position or particular location. So, here if you would like to take a, a kind of understanding of the thermal environment of this particular recording room, then I should be responding towards the questionnaire once you do the physical measurement of the thermal parameters. Okay. So, these are the considerations you need to, cons uh, need to take before you start any kind of thermal measurement of any workplace. 
So let us understand what are the factors need to be assessed for the heat exchange. So this is the kind of flow chart we can understand that factors which is going to affect the heat exchange. So external parameter at personal parameter. If we talk about external parameter definitely the temperature, the air humidity and air speed. Okay. So when we are talking about temperature, temperature of the air okay, of the environment which is surrounding. Second is air humidity because thermal comfort is very much connected with the kind of uh, uh, no, no, humidity we have in the air. With this same temperature may be you know uh, just take an example 37 degree Celsius. Okay? Where in one case humidity is less, in another case humidity is very high. You will find that with the same temperature where the humidity is very high, the person may find discomfort. Whereas where the humidity is to under tolerant, to, you know, tolerable range, maybe they find more comfortable. So external, uh, when we are talking about that, then humidity, temperature and the air speed. So if you have some kind of wind around, definitely that gives more comfort to the person. Right. So, these are the major external factor that is going to affect the heat exchange uh, of the human being. Now, coming to temperature, you have air temperature, mean radiant temperature and surface temperature. All these three we are going to learn how to measure. Now, coming to personal parameter, first impacting factor is clothing that what is the kind of clothing you are uh, having on that particular period of time and the metabolic rate. So, if you are having um, you no, know, you are wearing some clothing which is very much you know uh, uh, causing disturbance in the evaporation or maybe uh, convection then it will happen that heat is getting accumulated in your body then you will feel more heat stress right that is why during summer season we wear cotton clothes right now metabolic rate so if uh, your metabolic rate is very high that means heat is getting produced within the body right so if metabolic rate is high then you will feel more heat in in your body and that is going to uh, affect the heat exchange of the whole system Okay, if it is less, then it is also going to affect in other way. Okay, so personal factors are within that clothing is an important issue that you need to take care and the metabolic rate that also need to be measured to understand the heat exchange of the whole system of the human body. So now if we are talking about effect of temperature, these are the three variable that we should measure. One is air temperature, we will denote it as Ta, mean radiant temperature that is Tr and surface temperature that is the Ts. Now let us describe the air temperature. So degree of hotness or coldness at the work environment that we will be talking about air temperature indicated by the thermometer exposed to the ambient air so you can use the thermometer and you can get an indication what is the temperature it affects the evaporation and perspiration rate humidity and human comfort level in the work environment. It can be measured with conventional alcohol field or electronic thermometer and the sensor shielded in presence of radiation that is the sun or any other sources also can affect the air temperature. So here you can see I have given a range that is the uh, where you will feel what. So you will feel comfort if it is 10 to 40 degree Celsius plus minus 0.5 whereas you can feel stress if it is minus 40 degree to 
plus 120 degree Celsius. So, here you can feel heat stress, here you can feel cold stress, right. So, this is the kind of air temperature and we are going to measure it using the alcohol uh, field thermometer or any kind of electronic thermometer. So, what is the procedure of this particular method? So, what we were going to do? We are going to identify and assign the location within the workplace. So, suppose this is the uh, recording room, I want to measure the air temperature over here. So, we will try to understand that what are the position or location that we are going to measure for the air temperature. So, maybe we can create the grid. May normally, if it is a small room, then we can have 9 point grid like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and in between 1, 2, 3. So, like that we can create 9 points and we can measure the grid. If it is bigger room, we can dep depending on the requirement, depending on the uh, position, depending on the position of the fan, position of the AC, position of the window, we can definitely create a different grid system or uh, specific location for our purpose and we can uh, uh, assign that these are the location where we are going to measure. So, very first thing is you need to identify the location where you are going to measure the temperature. Then what you need to do that ensure the well ventilated placements for instrument installation are being used. Okay? In the third stage you have to prepare the logging technique. Logging technique means how you are going to measure it. So, maybe sometimes we do manual or automatic, sometimes we have analog or digital system. So, how you are going to collect your data? So, that you need to decide. It is absolutely based on the type of instrument you have. Okay? In the fourth stage, you have to collect the spaced readings throughout the day, maybe you know less than 2 minutes. So, that way you can measure the reading. So, it is always advised that you assess or uh, the record the reading for the whole shift. Here I have mentioned throughout the day that is mean that means 24 hours but if it is not required suppose you want to do for 8 hour shift then you do for the 8 hour shift. If you want for 4 hour shift you do it for that particular 4 hours shift. Okay, So, you do the measurement. Once it is done, then you calculate the average ambient temperature. So, it is like you are just record, keep on recording and then you do need to do the average, then you will understand how it is being changed. Then assess the discomfort level and once you understand if it is heat or cold, whatever it is, once you understand that what you have to do, you have to suggest the required intervention. Fine. So, what are the instrument used for this particular technique? First, we can use the alcohol filled thermometer or if not, you have electronic thermometer. All are available in the market. Any one of this based on your budget, based on your laboratory expenses, you can access any one of it. Okay. So, uh, direct measurement of the air can be done by the uh, uh, no alcohol filled thermometer and thermometer filled with maybe dyed alcohol you can be used then it is you no know, readings are more uh, clear maybe sometimes it is ethanol maybe sometimes it is kerosene based on the you know brand you will get that and temperature range measured between minus 112 degree centigrade. So, below the freezing point and 78 degree centigrade. So, here I have given an example of red diet alcohol thermometer fine. So, this way you can do the measurement this will look like this ok. So, this you can use for your uh, ambient temperature measurement or air temperature measurement. 
Now electronic thermometer, so that also is available. So you have sensors uh, in that and then you can measure it. So again you can have the direct measurement and temperature change uh, detected by use of thermosensitive devices where electrical resistance changes in the response to changing the temperature happens and through that you can get the measurement. So, it is predictive measurement method. So, thermometer displays predictive equilibrium temperature and measurements taken over 15 to 30 seconds. So, it is very quick okay. and ranges are like this 31.6 degree Celsius to 42.2 degree Celsius and under continuous measurement mode. So, if it is predictive then it, you can use this, if it is continuous then you can use thermometer display actual equilibrium temperature and achieved in less than 60 second ok. So, that is possible so electronic digital thermometer or high and hygrometer. Now, this was the air temperature or ambient temperature. Now, we need to understand we had three right. So, air temperature then next is mean radiant temperature. So, mainly we are talking about radiant temperature which is connected with your radiant heat exchange right. So, the average temperature of surrounding walls and the object within the work environment that you are going to measure. So, quantifies the exchange of radiant heat between the human body and the surrounding environment. What is happening within the body and the surrounding environment? It is defined and evaluated qualitatively and quantitatively for indoor and outdoor. For both indoor and outdoor you can have this type of measurement. So, it is measured direct indirectly using matte black globe. So, you have a globe thermometer, we call it as globe thermometer. It is a globe within that we have a thermometer, you no know, leaning within that and you place that thermometer, it is a very dark uh, matte globe, ok. I will show you the picture if I have. So, that you, you place in the uh, in that particular location and you can understand what is the radiant heat is uh, uh, radiant temperature is there in that particular situation ok. So, how do we measure similarly we need to identify and assign the location as we did for the air temperature. You need to ensure that it is well ventilated placement of the instrument and installations are properly done. So, you need to uh, confirm that. Then what you need to do? You have to allow the instrument equilibrium. You have to keep it for some time. So, you need then prepare the logging technique. Collect the spaced reading throughout the day as we did for air temperature. Can calculate the mean radiant temperature from the globe temperature reading. Also, you have to calculate it and you need to assess the discomfort or comfort. If it is comfort, you need not to go ahead for any kind of suggestion. But if there is some kind of discomfort, what you have to do that you have to suggest some intervention for that particular situation. So, till here you have instrumentation. This is through your questionnaire and then you take this decision based on all these uh, variable whatever all these data that you are going to get from the instrument ok. So, what is the instrument we are going to use for this? The name of the instrument is globe thermometer. So, it looks like this. This is a black matte globe. This is the thermometer. The center is placed in this particular location. So, it causes the radiation heat and it assesses that temperature and it you can see the reading over here. 
okay so indirect measurement of course it is not the direct measurement indirect measurement of mean radiant temperature so this matte matte black metallic sphere you know it's it's a copper alloy with very high conductivity this material or uh, this um, uh, this particular instrument is being you know manufactured with lot of uh, lot of understanding like you know this material itself is very important important factor for this particular instrument so it predicts the simultaneous effect of air temperature long wave radiation and air movement on human heat stress level so mean radiant temperature determined by balance of heat transfer that is related to the radiation that means heat gain and convection that is the heat loss between the globe and the surrounding environment so if it is very hot at the outside and uh, then you can have different uh, different reading if it is not that then you will get a different reading of it so it's like you know you are trying to understand balance between the heat uh, balance of the heat transfer radiation and the convection so how it is happening so assessment of room warmth uh, as per the human comfort level so using this particular variable you can also have an understanding about the human comfort level how do you calculate so this is the formula that you can use where tr this is the mean radiant temperature tg that you are going to get from your globe thermometer reading tg ta is your ambient temperature that you can get from your earlier that alcohol filled thermometer or electronic thermometer va is your air speed that you can measure with another instrument d is your globe thermometer diameter this is standard 0.15 meter and eg is the emission coefficient for black matte uh, see this particular matte black paint you have this particular value so you have this formula to understand what is the mean radiant temperature okay so nowadays you have different uh, small small free softwares where you just give all these values uh, tg ta and va automatically it gives you an value which talks about tr that is the mean radiant temperature okay so that is possible or simply you can use this particular formula to calculate it okay last one is your surface temperature or ts so it can be uh, like we can measure radiant heat emitted from infrared energy at equipment surface hotter than surrounding okay suppose you have a surface where you are working that surface is hotter than the surrounding in that case you need to understand that what is the kind of uh, uh, heat is radiating from that particular surface so that radiant heat which is going to emit from that particular surface we are going to measure and we are going to call it as surface temperature so it is measured with a specialized contact sensor or non contact infrared sensor and contact sensors ensure conduction between the surface and sensor while insulating sensor from the environment so this is the kind of sensor range or accuracy you can consider during the surface temperature reading so what is the procedure uh, quite similar but still there are small deviation first is 
you have to identify and assign the equipment within that particular workplace. You have to identify what sensor type are you are going to be uh, use for this. So, it is based on the availability as well as the objective of your study. Then maintain the good contact of sensor within the equipment surface. So, if the surface of that particular uh, equipment and the instrument that you are going to measure is not uh, creating the contact properly, then your readings are going to be different or it is going to not going to give you the correct reading. So, main, uh, first you need to establish the contact is correct. So, ensure simultaneous insulation of that particular sensor because if you are not ensuring then maybe the sensor is going to get damaged. So, identify the radiation impact due to surface uh, reflectivity or emissivity and then prepare the logging technique. Once you do that like you know you understand how you are going to collect your data then you collect your reading as per the active radiation for less than 3 min uh, 2 minutes or if something specific you can go for that. Then calculate the average surface temperature because you are doing it for uh, a whole uh, day right. So, maybe you can do the do the average of it and then you assess the discomfort level. Once you assess the discomfort level or you assess the risk level, then you go for the intervention as and what it is required. Okay. Very similar only thing is you need to understand this how the sensor is going to work for your case. What is the surface? How you are going to create that contact that is based on the individual experiment to individual experiment ok. So, you need to maintain that. Next I am talking about this this ambient temperature sensor. So, it is you know shuttered construction of radiation shields uh, which ensures the natural aspiration and accurate placement of sensor probe at the ambient temperature. So, you can see how it is being exposed ok. So, light colored shield reflects this solar radiation and projected on the device. So, sensors are protected from other radiations and reflection sources of that particular area or of that particular heat. So, it is connected like this and you will get the recording ok. Once these three parts are done then we can go ahead with the effect of air humidity effect of air humidity. So, let us understand that air humidity. It is expressed as relative humidity that is why it is RH relative humidity. So, actual moisture content in surrounding in comparison to maximum possible moisture content at any given temperature. So, what is there in actual and what is maximum is possible ok. So, you are going to compare that. So, suppose in a particular situation in a particular air temperature you understand right that if temperature goes on the higher direction a capacity of uh, humidity content is going to increase right. So, in a particular temperature what is available in actual and what is possible to accommodate in maximum. So, if you are going to compare that, that we are going to call as relative humidity ok. So, environmental moisture content determines the direction of vapor flow. If your uh, uh, the, the, the humidity relative humidity in the temperature uh, in the ambient air is very high then there is less chance of evaporation from your body and if there is less chance of evap evaporation then what will happen the heat will accumulate in your body and there then you will find lot of heat stress you will find lot of discomfort right. But if the 
content of the humidity is less in the environment then what will happen there will be high chance of evaporation uh, and then there will be heat loss from your body and you will feel comfort. So, that is the method of, uh, and that is the mechanism how it is going to affect your uh, heat comfort or thermal comfort in a particular situation. So, relative humidity we can measure 100 multiplied by uh, Pa that is the ambient vapor pressure divided by Ps that is the standard vapor pressure at the ambient temperature in percentage right. So, with relative humidity we measure using percentage. So, what are the instruments we need? We need electronic hygrometer, dew point sensor, Asman psychometer, sling or wheeling psychrometers. Okay. These are the instrument can be used to understand the relative humidity. Let us understand one by one electronic hygrometer. So, this may look like this, uh, but it can be a little different also depending on the brand that you are going to use. So, equipped with a temperature sensor and a different sensor that is the uh, capacitance, resistance, gravity and optical and humidity measured in proportion to property change due to the change in the air humidity. Instrument durability dependent upon sensor type, uh, what is the type of sensor, manufacturer quality and the operating environment. Based on that it can, it, it, it can be, it can be different, okay, it can be different. So, this is how electronic hygrometer look like. Every other thing has their own capacity, you can check individually from your own source. Now, let us understand how we did for the uh, air temperature and relat uh, relative humidity or the surface temperature. Let us understand how you are going to measure the relative humidity using the electronic hygrometer. So, you have to again assign the identify and assign the location. Then ensure the well ventilated placement of the instrument installation and uses. Then you need to prepare the logging technique. These are very common. Collect the humidity reading. Now here you have to do the reading within less than five, 1 minute. Okay? So allow the instrument, uh, instrument for recalibration but for each case you need to do the recalibration if you are using the electronic hygrometer. So, you have to do the recalibration. Ensure the stable read, uh, readings are consecutive readings are stable. So, suppose you are taking a reading at 3 hours 45 minutes, then 3 hours 46 minutes and 3 hours 47 minutes. If these 3 readings consecutive readings are uh, exactly same or very close then you can consider it. If it is fluctuating then you have to keep on taking the reading. So, assess the discomfort le level and based on that you can do the uh, you can suggest the required intervention for uh, specifically uh, taking a consideration from the relative humidity. Now, if that instrument is there, okay. Now, if another instrument that is the dew point sensor, then also you can measure. So, here I will give the instrument detail little bit, but it is not exactly specific for each instrument. There may be some operational changes from brand to brand. Okay? So, you need to, it is a monitoring device used in building technology assessment for consider, uh, condensation forming uh, risk. So, how the temp, uh, dew points are condensing to understand that we are going to use this particular um, instrument. So, what is dew point? Temperature at which moisture concentration of the environment is exactly equal to the saturation vapor pressure causing the condensation, right? So, that is the dew point. So, commonly installed at the 
climate controlled ceiling, controlled pipelines and the storage areas before if there is some kind of going to a damage before to prevent that you are going to install such instrument so that you can get an alert. So, high precision dew point measurement predicts the early condensation instances. Okay. So, it, it gives an alert system, it creates an alert system that here it is going to happen. So, whatever the precautionary measures is possible to take, you please take it. Okay. So, that is the kind of uh, uses of it. So, industrial applications include protecting the equipment. So, suppose there is an instrument uh, which we, we should protect from the uh, reaching to the dew point. So, what you can do? You can have this particular dew point sensor and you can keep on monitoring continuously that when the temperature is going to change and if it is changing and it is reaching towards dew point then definitely we need to start the intervention we need to do some kind of changes or operation need to be changed okay it is highly ac accurate and reliable in use but it is expensive so, what is the procedure? So, you need to identify and assign the location, same thing, ensure that well ventilated, identify the surface to be assessed. So, it is not that always you assess everywhere, so you need to identify that particular surface, maintain the surface contact and mount sensor. This is very important as we did in the surface temperature, right? We established the contact we establish that contact if we are failed to uh, establish that contact we will not get the correct reading you need to prepare the logging system so collect the dew point uh, reading for less than one minute calculate the uh, relative humidity you have the conversion table so which is being provided with the instrument so you calculate that ensure that stable readings uh, are recorded consecutively as I mentioned in the earlier case and then you assess the discomfort level and you give your suggestions or recommendation as per required ok. So, this is how we are going to use the dew point sensor. This is, is also not used if for every cases. It is only used where it is required to understand that if dew point reaches, then there is going to be a trouble for the whole situation. So, to do so, this type of sensors or this type of instruments we are going to use. So, everywhere every instrument is not required based on the objective that you are going to work on you should choose which instrument you 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 use for your experiment then this is a different type of psychrometer we will uh, measure the humidity and the of this ambient temperature and uh, relative humidity from this uh, using this particular instrument. It is very nice that it has a dry bulb, it has a wet bulb ok. So, uh, it, it has a dry bulb, it has a wet bulb. So, from the wet bulb you can understand the what is the kind of evaporation is happening due to the content of water vapor in your environment ok. So, evaporation from the wet wick cools the wet bulb thermometer ok. So, that happens and uh, so it takes down so always dry bulb temperature is high low uh, wet bulb temperature is in, in lower side you, you can find the difference. So, relatively lowering the wet bulb temperature to the dry bulb temperature and differences in temperature used to calculate the relative humidity ok. It is very similar for the wheeling hygrometer that we are going to discuss in the next. This is the procedure here uh, all these varieties uh, the initial phases are same. In third phase what you have to do you have to submerge the instrument in distilled water. Why? Because you are going to create that wet bulb, right? So, for less than a kind of 10 seconds, ensuring this wick is 
uh, no, soaked. So, fill instrument reservoir with distilled water, then you prepare the logging system, collect the reading for dry bulb and wet bulb within 20 to 40 second, allow the instrument for further recalibration and you repeat that uh, particular procedure till your consecutive readings are not coming same. Okay, so you have to stable. I, I can say not same. I will say it is stable, right? So consecutive reading need to be stable. Once it is done, then there is you no know, psychometric chart or table. From that you do the conversion and you calculate the relative humidity. Once you calculate the relative humidity, you assess the discomfort level and you go for your suggestions or modifications, right? So, this is how you are going to use this particular psychrometer. So, you can see how this looks like, okay, based on the brand that you are using, it can change. Next is wheeling hygrometer. Probably, this is very uh, common instrument and most of our ergonomics lab will have this particular instrument. Uh, uh, function is quite similar, the principle is quite similar as we discussed in the earlier uh, psychrometer. So, again here we have a dry bulb and well, wet bulb, you know, in, you know, in a cased, cased situation. So, you can see it is a one case and this is another case. So, you have one wet bulb, another is dry bulb. So, dry bulb temp thermometer exposed to the air temperature, wet bulb thermometer with cotton wick covering that particular bulb and the you know that particular wick is uh, soaked in a distilled water. So, you know same of uh, same principle that if the water uh, content in the air is high then evaporation will be less if air con uh, water content water vapor is less in the air then evaporation will be more okay so the same principle is being used so pivoting handle this is your pivoting handle Okay, you can rotate this particular uh, instrument. Dryer uh, air cools down wet bulb temperature or th wet bulb thermometer to lower the wet bulb temperature and increasing the difference and thus the higher relative humidity. So, if the this particular uh, difference uh, dry and wet bulb is more, then relative humidity will also change. This is the procedure, it is very similar as we did for the earlier psychrometer, okay. So, you need to recalibrate it, okay, and then you need to go for the further process. Relative humidity, you have also here your psychometric conversion table and using that psychometric conversion table, you can find that what is the relative humidity. Once we understood the effect of uh, relative humidity, let us go ahead with the effect of air speed. We will be terming it as VA, velocity of air, okay, air speed. So, cumulative representation of movement, direction, and the turbulence of environmental air and related heat loss via convection and evaporation. Very uh, simple definition, right? So, when we are talking about the movement, we are talking about the direction, we are talking about the turbulence of environmental air and which is going to cause the heat loss due to convection and the evaporation, right? So, increased frequency of concurrent uh, heat exchanges leads to high magnitude winds, winds, right? So, heat exchange is equivalent to the wind speed. If there is high amount of heat exchange, wind speed also will increase. So, these are the kind of instrument, a catathermometer, uh, very commonly used instrument. Also, 
vein anemometer that is also commonly used instrument uh, for measuring your uh, air velocity. So, let us understand one by one. So, this is how the vein anemometer looks like also here depending on the brand it will be different. So, wind meter used to measure air velocity for unidirectional air movement with slow fluctuation. If the fluctuations are very high it will not work. Can be used for calculating the volumetric flow of the air and easy to use and portable types commonly used for monitoring uh, HVAC system, air flow equipment and exhaust system. Just for all these cases you can use this particular anemometer. So, again let us understand what is the procedure you have to find out the location that you have to find out it is well ventilated. Place the instrument facing towards direction and the source of the air velocity. So, you have to check that in which direction the air is flowing based on that you have to position it. So, then you prepare the logging system, record the reading until it is stabilized. So, consecutive readings need to be stabilized. Allow the instrument for recalibration you assess the discomfort and finally you give the suggestion or recommendation whatever is required ok. So, using this particular instrument you can measure the air velocity in this way. This is the instrument named as catathermometer. So, measurement of air speed, heat alcohol thermometer measuring air current intensity as per time taken to cool down. So, measures the lower speed during air circulation assessment ok. Using that catathermometer we can measure the air circulation assessment. So, how it is circulating right within the in environment. So, what is the procedure? First you need to identify those logging places like you know position space ok, um, well ventilation that need to be maintained. The next is dip the thermometer bulb into hot water till alcohol level rises till 38 degree Celsius ok. You have to first create that. So, in a hot water you have to dip that kata thermometer. Wipe the instrument bulb to avoid any error in the measurement that you need to follow the uh, precaution. Then place the instrument facing towards the direction and source of air velocity ok. So, where uh, in which direction the air is flowing you have to place that uh, thermometer in that particular location you need to prepare the login. Record the time taken for alcohol level to drop till 35 degree Celsius ok. So, you started with 38 degree you stopped at 30. 5 degree. Allow the instrument for recalibration and record the readings till it is stabilized. So, you have to repeat it 2 times, 3 times, mainly minimum 3 times is required ok. Then you calculate the uh, air velocity using the recorded time. So, how long it took from 38 to 35. So, based on that you can uh, do the calculation. Then you do the um, discomfort level calculation, you assess that and you give your suggestion. So, here you are going to finish your catathermometer reading and you can measure the air velocity. This is little you know you need lot of practice, you need lot of experience to do all this process. Whereas, in case of this you get automatic reading. Okay, so, this is little easy. Now, once you do all those things, these all were for the outer environment, right. So, how the outer environment is going to affect your heat exchange procedure. So, everything we discussed. Now, we have something called personal factor under that we have clothing and we have metabolic rate. Let us discuss those two component further. So, effect of 
clothing insulation. So, as I mentioned, if you have lot of clothing, it will prevent the person to lose the body heat towards the environment, right. So, how it looks like? So, clothing we can call it as I T or uh, I C L. So, you know, insulation due to clothing, insulation due to clothing. So, or insulation due to textile basically. So, I T. So, textile property that provides thermophysiological comfort by balancing the heat and moisture exchange between the body and environment, we will be calling it as clothing insulation. It provides protection against the extreme temperatures via maintained moisture and thermal level during resting and active physical stress states. It is expressed as total insulation and intrinsic insulation, total in, uh, insulation and intrinsic insulation. So, when we are talking about total insulation where IT includes surface air layer, intrinsic insulation where ICL is for clothing closed air layers only. So, only for clothing. So, values for IT, ICL and vapor resistance can be measured from extensive list of clothing insulation which is being published in ISO 9920 in 1995. So, they have all list. Suppose you are wearing only a vest, okay. What is your clothing insulation? So, we call it as clo value. Suppose you are wearing socks and then shoe. So, what is your clothing uh, clothing insulation? So, what is the clo value? Okay. So, like that ISO listed this whole list, you uh, know, whole, uh, whole set of possible set of uh, uh, clothing that is possible and what is the clo value for it that we can ex, um, refer from this particular standard. So, how do we calculate the vapor resistance R e is equal to I t divided by 0 0.0165 into I m. So, what, e, what are these things? R e is the clothing vapor resistance, I t is the clothing heat resistance, I m is the clothing permeability index. So, how the permeability is there in uh, for that particular textile for that particular material and this is a Lewis constant. So, assumption is head and hands are covered with the caps and gloves that is the body is fully covered. In that particular situation this formula you can use and you can get the uh, vapor resistance ok, but it is always suggested you refer the flow value from ISO. Uh, 9920. So, sample values for, for clothing insulation for the uh, no, the kind of uh, wear or kind of um, uh, the uniform people wear during the workplaces. So, these are the values suppose I am talking about underpants, shirt, trousers, socks and shoe. If this is the whole combination then your flow value is 0.75 ok. This is referred from ISO. Then ICL will be this and IT will be this. So, this is measured. So, always when we do uh, clothing related things, we refer all these varieties of pre-computed table. Okay. And if it is not exactly the description over here, you can calculate yourself using the individual clo value available in the in that particular list and then you calculate your RE separately, fine. So, you uh, this is the reference from where I have taken this. So, you can see if the uh, these things are increasing your clo value is also increasing. So, number of where you are increasing uh, the clo value is also increasing.
so this is again uh, uh, some like you know uh, only you know um, uh, you know only panties t shirts shorts light socks and sandals so you know in a in a very informal you know very comfort type of active you know clothing then clove value is quite uh, low whereas if you are wearing so many things then your clove value is quite high okay so that way you you can understand what is the kind of uh, thermal comfort you have uh, you, from the clothing perspective okay so what are the varieties of clothing you are uh, wearing and how that clothing is affecting your comfort so when we are talking about thermal comfort it is not only the uh, air temperature air velocity or uh, radiant heat it's not only that what we are wearing okay so if your body surface is covered with some suppose, suppose you are wearing gloves right so you are minimizing the chance of water vapor evaporation from your body then what will happen your clove value will increase if you remove that glove definitely your clove value will decrease and you will go in the little comfort zone of thermal comfort okay now next factor is metabolic rate so cloth is one factor coming under personal and then second is your metabolic rate that is going to affect your thermal comfort so we call it bmr basal metabolic rate or rmr resting metabolic rate so minimal caloric count required by individuals for accomplishing everyday task at the workplace is the basal metabolic rate so metabolic energy of human body released you know as as heat right so we have lot uh, metabolism lot of metabolism is happening so when it happens it releases energy it, it, the energy is released in terms of heat and that can cause your uh, that can actually affect your thermal comfort so classified as per general work or job task description and used for predicting the inspection and intervention at work as required this can be measured using indirect calorimetry or that is the measuring the oxygen uptake because when we are talking about energy generation within the body uh, through metabolism definitely it requires oxygen consumption through oxygen only the metabolism happen so when we have the uh, metabolism the uh, we consume more oxygen right so using indirectly we measure the metabolic rate using the amount of oxygen consumed by that particular person so the data derived from extensive listing provided in this particular uh, standard that is iso 8996 it is published in 1990 however there are some more revision so estimation method for metabolic heat production it has different uh, category no level 1 level 2 and level 3 so this is the uh, uh, source that i have used to get this particular data now let us understand it so classification as per activity type and classification as per the occupation so this is you know you know it's a you you can get a rough information with higher error risk okay that is possible and maybe sometimes uh, at the workplace it is not necessary however here you may need little about uh, some kind of technical equipment okay for these three cases you have higher error risk plus minus 15% accuracy and it required time study because how long you are 
in that particular case ok. So, time study is important and um, uh, for using the heart rate under defined you know specific defined condition maybe it is not required for the uh, inspection status at the workplace. Now, if I am coming uh, coming for the measurement the error risk within the measurement accuracy and time study it was again 15 percent accuracy and time study is very much important over here. So, estimation of methods for metabolic heat production we should follow this chart to get the understanding and it, it is being described at the ISO 8996 and I referred this particular table from Stanton which is being published in 2005. Okay. The next part that is the metabolic rate classification for general work description that if you are uh, no resting in condition the mean metabolic rate will be W per meter square if that is the unit then it is 65 then low metabolic rate it will be 100 moderate 165 high 230 and very high in then it is 290. So, if you can have an understanding what is the kind of metabolic rate they have in a particular point of time based on the activity schedule ok activity uh, activity uh, description you can understand where they can be. Suppose I am doing a carrying heavy material or hand moving or digging or shoveling. If I am doing such activity definitely my uh, metabolic rate will be somewhere here right. But if I am just sitting I am not doing lot of work I am uh, maybe somewhere here then my metabolic rate will be near to 65 or 75 or somewhere that so that I am in a resting condition and which will give me more thermal comfort than this particular case ok. So, if you are doing lot of physical activity ok your muscle is acting so your metabolic rate is increasing the uh, heat is getting generated within the body and that can cause thermal discomfort. So, this is how you should measure the metabolic rate classification you can use this particular classification table and again I, may, I would like to mention it is being referred from this particular book you can see you, if you want you can check or cross check back from this particular book ok. So, everything we did everything we measured small small categories right we measured the all effects which is from the external factor and the factors which is for the personal. Now, we should understand how we are going to assess the subjective. Now, I will go back to two slides and I will see where this is applicable. Now, here you can see everywhere we are talking about assessment of the discomfort level. How do we assess it? Definitely there is some procedure to it right. So, in this particular section when I am talking about uh, the subjective assessment we are going to understand that particular aspect. So, let us go ahead. So, here you have these five, uh, five categories one is perceptual then you need to understand about the evaluation then preference acceptability and tolerance. So, if you want to develop the questions or uh, no related information or you want to interview it then you should go ahead with this type of question. If you want to understand mainly about the perception then how you are feeling about this particular environment, how you are feeling about the temperature. So, this type of question. If it is evaluation, do you find it comfortable? Do you find it discomfort? Something like that question. If you are talking about preference, so these are the kind of variables you should have to assess 
the subjective response and these are the varieties of questions you can derive based on the requirement okay so it's it's not only that you no know, single question maybe you need to understand the severity you need to understand the intensity so you can use the kind of scale the scale of subjective description of personal thermal state in response to the question suppose i am talking about how are you feeling right now so i told i am feeling hot now hot means at what extent so you can use this five point scale okay so you can use that or you can use this type of scale or uh, you know the whole category you can club together and you can have a one scale or you can use visual analog scale vas so any kind of scale you can use to give a value or give a gradient in that particular situation now when i am talking about comfort similarly we can use this type of scale 0 1 2 3 4 so five point scale or you can use this kind of point description so comfortable slight comfortable uncomfortable very uncomfortable and extremely uncomfortable so here it is kind of you know mid middle point and this is on this direction this is in another direction so you can have this type of scale similarly here uh you have warmer you have cooler and again you have uh, it's a seven point scale and you have description along with that particular scale so that way you can measure them then personal acceptability statement suppose i want to understand do you accept this thermal environment for your activity or not okay so what type of questions you can ask here is the description okay so acceptable rather than unacceptable so you can go for either yes situation so all these are binary right either yes or no so you have uh, gradation in earlier case here you have gradation here you have only binary data okay so you can uh, you you can do the acceptability rating using this type of situation or this type of questions so in this way once you have all these factors together then you can say yes i have an understanding complete understanding about the thermal situation or thermal condition of this whole scenario or of this whole workplace okay so i have described that how the external factors can be assessed in different method different tools and how do you assess your clothing and how do you assess your metabolic rate and once you have all combination then you can assess the subjective uh, understanding that how the person is getting uh, you no know, how the person is reacting towards that particular thermal environment once you have full understanding about all these variables then definitely you can go ahead with your uh, your intervention or recommendation suppose for this particular situation if you talk about the clothing uh, you can get a value how i am uh, going to evaporate the how my skin is going to evaporate how the metabolic rate like i am in a resting condition right so you can understand what is the kind of metabolic rate i have right now you can measure the air temperature air velocity relative humidity radiant heat using any kind of instrument that i described then you are going to ask me about my subjective feeling for this particular environment so once you have all these variables ready with you then you can say that this particular thermal environment is conducive for this type of activity or not if you find that this is not conducive 
or this is not comfortable then definitely you can go ahead with the intervention or recommendation if it is comfortable then you continue the same uh, same thing further okay so this is how we are going to use thermal comfort or thermal measurement to uh, design the work environment in a particular situation so that's all for today you should do the practice of how to measure uh, these uh, you know variable so you should have access to all these instrument so every laboratory uh, basic ergonomics laboratory may have all these instrument so wherever you are and uh, you try to get uh, use them and uh, get them and use them and check the you know, variable that you can measure and based on that you can do your or plan your experiment okay if you have any question you can uh, no, put it in your discussion forum or you can uh, discuss it in the uh, the open for, uh, discussion session okay that's all thank you mm -hmm.